Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to The Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. As farmers finalise plans for the upcoming breeding season, Kevin Downing from the ICBF highlights the important bull and cow factors to consider. And I first asked Kevin about the recent changes to the EBI. I have introduced two new traits, and the load traits, um, which are TB and liver fluke. So they're traits that will help farmers to identify bulls that are more resistant to TB and liver fluke. So it's just like, you know, any genetic uh, uh, index dictates, you know, how well an animal, for example, produces milk or weight gain, the animal health is also covered by genetics, you know, so farmers can now breed these cattle that will be less likely to, to have liver fluke and TB. So that's been introduced uh, this spring and that's available. It's not available um, on the, the the bull listing or the bull search, but it is available on a standalone area of the, of the ICBF website. And farmers can go in there and choose bulls and we have it broken down by... Um, um, traffic light system, so the green being the top herd of bulls that are more resistant uh, down as far as the red, which are the bulls more susceptible to TB and liver fluke. Uh, we've also, I suppose, introduced um, a dairy beef index, um, and that's uh, an index that's going to rank bulls on not only calving ease and uh, short gestation and low mortality, but also on the beef traits that 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 animal will uh, produce as well. So we're, we're trying to, I suppose, increase the value of the calf, the, the, the dairy beef calf that, that is produced. So I suppose up to now, we've been just focusing in on short gesta- gestation animals with easy calving and probably neglected the actual beefing uh, element of that calf. So hopefully this new dairy beef index, which is is again available on the website, not actually directly on the animal search. And um, we hope that that will improve the quality of calf being produced as well as maintaining the easy calving bulls that are there. And um, the list, so the the new act, the, the new um, crew from the evaluation run has just been completed, and um, a, a, an updated list of bulls suitable for use in the dairy herd are available to download. And farmers can just go onto the website and, and choose the bulls from there. And we'd encourage everyone to take a look at that if they're going to use um, beef AI this, this spring. And like, you know, if, if we take um, if we take it from there, Kevin, right, I'm, I'm a dairy farmer and I'm completing the task now of selecting the bulls for the breeding season. What are the steps that farmers should take to select the most appropriate bulls for their herd? Okay, well, I suppose the first step that any farmer should do before they even look at bulls is to know where they're at themselves, um, what their own herd is producing. So uh, when I say producing, I mean from a genetic point of view. So the the place they need to find that information is on the dairy, uh, the Herb Plus EBI report. And that will give you an indication of where your your own um, genetics is at. So you have a breakdown of the milk and the fertility traits, and they're the key traits in the EBI. So once you establish where you're at and um, what areas that are are probably uh, weak that you need to improve on, then you can go about selecting a team of bulls. That's the second step. And then what I would suggest is that there is a a sour advice um, program available, which will which will allow you to, um, I suppose, first of all, choose which females you want to breed, because not every every farmer will want to will want to put a, a, a dairy ice drawn on one of their cows. Uh, they can choose which you know which animals are calling. So you're you're literally literally only dealing with the um with the with the dairy females that you want to breed a dairy either. So then it'll allow you to pick the bulls. So the, the list of bulls, all the bulls from the various egg companies are listed in that. And you can then shortlist your your bulls down to which which ones will you know, correct whatever issues you have in your herd. So if you're, you know, if you're particularly weak in the fertility traits, then you can very easily with the sliders that we have on the sour advice, pick bulls that are, are very strong in fertility or vice versa. If the, for example, protein percentage is poor, you can zone in on uh, bulls that have high protein percentage. So knowing where you're at then picking the teams and then actually using the sour advice, which will actually match the bulls that you've chosen up to the cows to, to prevent any inbreeding 
and minimize the variation between milk and fertility because you don't want uh, extremes in, in, in both sides. You want a more balanced animal that has both milk and fertility. So the sire advice does all that and the farmer doesn't have to worry about it. Um, and then once they have ran the, the sire advice, that can be saved off to either a technician's handheld. So the, the information is available when the technician arrives into the yard or it can also be printed out on the breeding charts, which we produce there um, the second or third week of April. So you've 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 mentioned some really interesting points there, Kevin. And the first thing I want to pick up on is you were saying at the start of your sire advice, you can select cows that you want to breed your replacements from. And then you can also select cows for culling. I suppose, you know, people are becoming more and more aware of the fact that they can identify their, you know, their very best cows and they want them to be the mother of the heifers that they'll bring into the herd. I suppose, what are the main things that you're looking at, um, you know, for for good um, dams for your replacement heifers? Just, I suppose, the, the, there's two key things. Uh, I suppose the, the the EBI is the number one. So the higher EBI animals are obviously the best animals to, to breed from. That being said, if you have a, a high EBI um, a cow that's calving in April, um, she is not going to be, you know, as profitable as a cow that's calving in 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 February. So again, I suppose you have to also look at the the, the calving date of your cows when you're choosing whether you breed uh, dairy or to that animal or not. But it's it's the EBI is what you look at. So the higher EBI, the more profitable the progeny will be. If you're looking at culling animals from the herd. I suppose the, the key tool that we have is the cow's own work, or, or COW. And that actually looks at the uh, number of factors. It looks at the age of the animal, looks at its own performance, and it looks at its, its future performance, as well as the replacement value that, that, that it would cost to replace that animal. So that's an index that, that's used to cull animals. So making culling decisions, you would use that tool. And then for the selecting the ones that the highest highest TBI ones is the ones you should be breeding from, bearing in mind the calving date that that cow has had as well. So as I said, the really late calving ones, they might be more suitable to putting a beef straw on those. And I guess, you know, you mentioned the cow's own worth index and, you know, people are beginning now to settle in terms of cow numbers. So they are taking cognizance of animal performance and they're not just culling empty cows in the herd. And I suppose if we move on then, you know, in terms of the bull selection, there is a, a big debate every year on farms. Will we just use daughter proven or will we have a mix of daughter proven and genomically selected? Um, you know, we, we have discussed this on the podcast before, but I suppose what is your thinking on that, Kevin, um, based on, I suppose, what you're seeing in terms of performance from the daughter proven and genomically selected bulls? Okay, so I suppose the first thing you have to say is what what is a daughter proven bull? And I suppose in the past, if you go back, you know, maybe ten years, bulls that were on the active bull list when they say daughter proven, they more than likely were proven for fertility as well as milk. Whereas any bull on the active bull list today, none of those bulls are really proven for fertility. They're just proven for milk. So I suppose the definition of daughter proof has changed over the years because of the, I suppose, the, the, the improvements we're making in EBI year and year, bulls aren't lasting on the list as long as they used to be before. So the, the actual, the fertility proof, which is required for a proper 95% proof, proven bull, it, that's not available on the list at the moment. So that's the first thing I'd say. So whether you use daughter proven then or, or genomically selected, I suppose, uh, the evidence over the last uh, while is that there is an overprediction in, in the EBI, something in the order of maybe in the last group up to about 30 euro of an overprediction. But it's not just for GS bulls or genomic bulls, it's, it's across all the different categories. I, I suppose the reason for that is because what I said already is they're not fully proven, uh, these, these daughter proven uh, bulls are not fully. So they still have a lot of genomics contributing to their EBI. So all, all categories of bulls are probably being slightly over predicted. 
And that's just something that we have to um, build into our models. And I suppose it is consistent with international experience that that is is happening, uh, um, you know, in, in other countries as well. But I suppose if we were to look at using GS versus daughter proven, if you just use, we'll say, a team of daughter proven bulls and looking at the active bull list from uh, this spring, you know, if you take the top 20 bulls and compare their EBI with the top 20 bulls that are GS, you're looking at a 70 or a difference between the daughter proven and the GS bulls. So, yeah, if you, you can use it, but you're looking at, you know, at 70 or you're looking at, you know, three to four years of genetic gain will be lost if you just focus in on daughter proven. Now, that's not to say you can't use a daughter proven bull or two in your team. Um, by all means, that's, that's, that's not to be um, discounted, but just focusing in daughter proven, you are going to lose uh, genetic gain and those bulls can drop as well. I mean, a, da- a daughter proven bull currently on the list, you know, can drop between, you know, plus or minus maybe uh, 90 euro, whereas a, a GS bull has a plus or minus maybe 110 euro. So there isn't a huge difference between those. And again, to minimize the risk, you just need to use a team of bulls. And in the past, I suppose we would have been recommending five bulls. That recommendation has moved to eight bulls now. And I suppose the reason being is a lot of the bulls are out of, um, you know, a lot of the bulls in the bull list might be have the same sire. So, you know, if that sire falls, then it might affect a couple of, of uh, bulls on the actual list. So we've moved our recommendation up to eight bulls for your typical 100, 150 cow herd. You should be using a team of eight bulls. And I suppose that was my next question. So uh, you, you've answered that, Kevin. But I suppose just to recap and and emphasise what you're saying is the, um, you know, your your team of genomically selected bulls is 70 euro ahead of your daughter proven. And, and you've identified that as three to four years um, of genetic gain. And I suppose if we just look at the 70 euro based on, I suppose, some of the work done um, with, say, ICBF and Chagas, each euro in EBI will will leave an additional two euro in profit um, per lactation. So that's 140 euro additional profit from, I suppose, suppose the offspring of the genomically selected bulls compared with the daughter proven bulls. Um, if we're looking at a 100 cow herd, Kevin, um, how many AI bred replacements do they need? Okay, so typically uh, looking at a replacement rate of 18 to 20%, which is the, 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 in the average that we have uh, in Ireland. Um, you're looking at, um, I suppose, the best herds, you know, with a, with a, you know, maybe using two straws to get a cow and calf. You're looking at, um, I suppose, 80 straws for a 100 cow herd. So that's four straws per, per, per cow because half of them are going to be male, half will be female. So, you know, to get 20, 20 animals, you're looking at 80 straws. So, um, and that's a minimum, and, that, and they're the better performing ones. So the range would be 80 to 90. I suppose one thing which, if we could um, give any advice is as well, you know, the stock bull usage. You know, um, if you are going to use a stock bull, you know, you, know you, you should really focus in on the EBI of the bulls that you are buying. Um, like the average EBI of the stock bull in Ireland at the moment is, you know, 100 euro behind uh, the AI uh, bull. So, you know, it's 110 euro versus 210 euro. And like, as you said already, for every one euro, it's two euro in profit. So that's 200 euro of a difference, you know, for every animal that those stock bulls produce compared to the AI, AI bred ones. And the other one as well is, if at all possible, you know, your 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 um, your heifers, they're, they're the best genetics in your herd because they're, they're the latest um, I suppose genetics, and that's where you're going to see your 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 biggest gain as well. So, using AI on heifers as well is key, and to trying to get those, I suppose, those cows, those heifers calved down again. You know, at 22, 26 months of age, that's another key message because, you know, the evidence has, has shown that you know, uh, heifers that calve between 22 and 26 months, you know, uh, last longer in the herd and and produce more solids. And, you know, currently we're only at about 70% nationally of, of animals calving in that window. So, again, you know, focusing in on your early calving um, 
cows, making sure that they're bred to dairy AI and making sure that they're getting a good start from the world go, you know, will will help you achieve those kind of 22 to 26 month uh, calving targets. I think that's a lovely note to finish on, uh, Kevin. And I suppose just to recap, when we're, you know, the, the cow side of things is as important as the, the bulls we're picking and we're looking at our higher high EBI cows um, with early calving dates and to really focus on getting the heifers calved down at the two years of age, um, you know, and maintaining them in the herd and with, you know, they being the, the best genetic uh, potential in the herd. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. Thank you, Emily. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast and my thanks to Kevin Downing for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify and for more information go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.